Welcome to my video series on the Creality CR Scan Lizard. This video will cover installation of the CR Studio 2.0 software and also give a quick overview of the UI. A quick disclaimer that I'll only be covering installation for the Windows version of CR Studio 2.0, as that is what my system uses. But the installation process for Mac users should be similar enough that you can get an idea of the steps from this video. I have noticed that the updates to the Mac version have been coming out after the Windows versions, but it's only been a couple of weeks wait in between. So Creality are active on the development on both platforms. Also keep in mind this is new software, especially the newer 2.0 version, and there are problems with it. Expect crashes, poor translations, and general weirdness when using the software, and that in part is why I'm doing these videos. Since the explanation to a Western audience of how to use the CR Studio software is basically lacking in many areas, and users are pretty much having to figure out things for themselves. Even the user guide that comes with it is based on the previous 1.0 version of the software, and many of the UI elements have changed between these two versions. The good thing is I believe Creality is actively developing this software, and I'm sure we'll see things improve over time, especially if we give our feedback. So enough chat for now, let's get into the video so I can show you how to install the software, give you a brief overview of the UI elements, and also show you how to install the calibration file that you'll need to be able to use your scanner. The first thing we need to do is download the CR Studio 2.0 software. We can find this on the Creality Cloud website. On the Creality Cloud website, navigate over on the menu to Software and Firmware. Once the page loads, look for the second menu in the middle here, and you want to click on Software. And finally, once that page is loaded on the next menu on the side here, click on CR Studio Scan. So on this page, you should see all the versions of CR Studio software, both for Windows and Mac versions. For a direct link to the download page, check in the description of this video. There is some confusion here because we have two versions. One says Lizard here, and then there's a 1.8 and then a 2.20, but they all have a release date of 15th of the 6th. Just go for the top one, which is CR Studio V2.2.0. Uh, for Windows, it is 0 0.0010, and for Mac, it's going to be 2.2.0.2.0007. So for Windows users, you want this one, and for Mac users, you want this one. There have been some users using previous versions or the light version of the software, but this video is purely on the version 2.0 of CR Studio. And in this specific video, it's going to be just for Windows machines. For Mac users, you could probably just follow along with these steps as I'm sure it's going to be similar. So we are going to click on this latest Windows version to download it and just let it download. Once it's finished downloading, open the file, which will start the installation. So once you launch the installation file, you should get the splash screen and you just need to go to install now and then wait for the installation process to complete. During the installation, you may get a pop-up that asks you which device do you want to support. In our case, we are just using the CR Scan Lizard, so make sure that is checked and click OK. And then the installation should continue. If you have both scanners, you could pick both options, but I'm pretty sure in the options, you can also change these settings and select different scanners anyway. So it's not too important, but just make sure you pick CR Scan Lizard in this case. So the installation should be complete now and it's asking you to start. So you can just click on start to start the software. And that's it. Now let's move on to loading the calibration file for the scanner. And I'll also give you a quick tour of the CR Studio 2.0 software UI. With the software now launched, the first thing you should see is the splash screen, which asks you what mode you want to start in, which can be either handheld mode, turntable mode, or you can even open an existing project. Since I've installed this software previously, and already started projects, that's why you're seeing projects down the bottom. But if it's your first time installing the software, you'll likely not see anything down there. It doesn't matter what mode we select to begin with. So in this case, let's just go with table mode as once you start the software, you can change between the different modes anyway. The first thing we can look at is the settings that we can control in the software. So if we go up to the top menu to file and then settings, this is where all the application settings are located. The first tab is the generic options, which has some display options that we can change like colors and also a white and dark mode, which is the color interface. When you change this, you do have to apply and then restart the program for it to activate. On the right side, we have the first one is render, which is max number of rendered frames. I'm not entirely sure what this setting does. 
I'm assuming that the higher number is going to maybe provide more quality, but come at a more performance cost, and then a lower would be opposite. But play around with this setting and see what it effects it has for yourself. The next one is preview before scanning in handheld mode and the countdown length can be adjusted in seconds. By default this is 10 seconds I believe because I haven't changed it from here. What this does is when you're in handheld mode you get and you hit scan there's like a preview window so you can at least look at the target and just make sure everything lines up and it will count down before it actually starts scanning. So this is where you change that length of time. If you need a little bit more time you can bump this up or if you think it's too long you can adjust it lower. So that's where it will be but it only applies to the handheld mode. I find 10 seconds to be a good number for me. The work directory is where your projects will save, so set it to a location that has plenty of space. And the final option is guidance tips, and again this is one of those options that if you enable you have to restart the software. To show you what guidance tips are, if we just close out of this we can just cancel or close. When you hover over something you should see a little explanation pop up, so here we're saying face, here it's saying points. So it doesn't apply to everything, but that's what the guidance is for. And we will just go back quickly into the settings and continue. So if you do make any changes, make sure you hit apply. And if it asks to restart the application, do that and then come back. Moving into the next tab, which is the scanner options. And this is just to pick between the original CR scan 01 and the CR scan lizard. So you may have both scanners or I'm assuming you just have the CR scan lizard. So this is where you can just make sure it's selecting the correct scanner for the software. If it's not on the correct scanner for you, uh, just click on the correct one and then apply. The next tab is the language tab. This is probably self-explanatory. It's just changing between languages that the software is displaying in. And the last tab to look into might be interesting, which is shortcut keys. So here we can apply different keys on the keyboard or mouse for quick access to tools. I haven't played with this much yet, but it's something that I might look into more. For the moment, I haven't found much need for shortcut keys. So apart from making sure the CR scan lizard is your selected scanner, because I'm assuming you're watching this video because you have one, let's close the window by either cancelling or going to the cross button at the top and we're back at the main screen. Let's now take a walk through the UI. I encourage you to also go into any areas and explore with more detail to see what you might find on your own. And if you find anything interesting, put it down in the comments of this video. It's always great to see what other people discover. So up in the top is your basic menu, file, tools, edit, history, and help. If we click on file, this is where you have your new project, save, export, import, etc. settings. Next is the tools menu, which has camera controls and different view modes. So in the project mode, it has perspective and parallel. I'm assuming that means perspective and I believe it should be orthographic. And you also have a shader mode, so you have smooth and flat. The edit menu has different ways of selecting and editing mesh geometry. So you can explore this menu, but we'll also look at these selection tools in a later video. Since this is a fresh installation, if I click on history, it's not gonna show any history, but I'm assuming it's either gonna show a history of previous projects or maybe previous actions that you've taken in the software. And then the help menu is for support and checking for any updates to the software. So on the left, we have different options for the mesh display type, selection tools, texture display, sizing, multi-window, etc. In the top left-hand corner, we have a connection status of the scanner. So I currently don't have mine connected, so that's why you should see something like control disconnected. If you have it connected, then you may see a different display here. In the very bottom left, you can see some statistics. We also have our buttons for starting the scan. And then on the right bottom, we have a 3D gizmo to show your model orientation. At the top, we have a menu for changing between different modes. So hand scan, table scan, and edit mode. So when you start the software and it asks you for which mode you want to begin in, and we select a table scan, it doesn't really matter because you can always change this once you're in the software. And the final thing is the panel on the right. So this is where we have options for actually controlling the scanning. It's broken in a few different tabs along the top for adjust, align, and process. So the first thing we'll look at is the adjust panel. And in here you have a different mode to select from when you're scanning, so geometry or texture, which we will look into when we actually start scanning. 
the brightness control is for how much light the scanner is putting out. So a higher number is going to send out more light to scan with, but we will explore this option and the effects it has in a later video when we begin scanning. And then use external texture mapping is when you have a color kit and you're taking photos along with your scanning to actually apply textures to your mesh. This bottom panel will show scan data. So as you do a scan, it will come up uh, individually for each one because normally when you scan something, you'll do maybe two to four scans to get different angles and then you'll align and process them. The next tab will be align. Because we don't have any scan data available, we can't move into this tab. But normally, once you actually scan something, this will become available. And this is an area where you can align automatically and also have some manual control over the alignments. And then the final tab is for processing. So the next stage, once you align all your scans together, the next stage is processing where it actually takes that point cloud data and kind of smooths it out and gives it a final look. So we can't move into that tab either because we don't have any scans available yet for it to actually process. But we will again look at that in another video when we begin scanning. One thing we can look at is just the camera controls. So if I open a recent project, here we have a figurine that I scanned. To zoom in and out, you just use the middle mouse button and scroll back and forward. So that's your zoom control. To rotate the model, you just hold down the left click and then drag and you can rotate around. If you press and hold the middle mouse button and drag your mouse, you can pan to move the model around. You can also see here that now I've got a model open or a previous project open that we can see some of the data that I was talking about that show up here. So I'll explain this more later. So that's all the camera controls we need to look at for now. There is one final thing we need to do, which is add the calibration file so that the scanner actually works correctly. First, you'll need to connect your scanner to the computer. So make sure it's powered on and connected correctly. If you've done this right, then you should see that the status has changed in the top left-hand corner. So we need to add the calibration file so that the scanner works correctly. You can do this by going up to the top menu, going to File, and then Import Calib. We can manually import it. And if you have a calibration file, which I think there is one on the USB that comes with the scanner, but I actually found it easier just to go to the network download tab. So click on that. But if you did have the calibration file, you can just click on the dots here and then come up that way. But in our case, or in my case, I'm going to network download and then just click on import. So it's gonna scan the internet and not find it. Okay, so we can see the first time we had an issue with the downloading the calibration file over the network. And I've seen other people mention the same thing. I found that is probably because I had the software open and then connected the scanner. After I had that error, what I actually did was cancelled out of it, restarted the software, and then came back and went to network download and import. And it says this time that it's downloaded successfully. So I recommend if you do get that error that we saw just before when you're trying to download over the network, close the software, make sure the scanner is fully connected and powered on, then start the software and go to network download and try to import at that time. And it should actually come up successfully. So once that is successful, we can close. And as long as you haven't had any other problems with loading the calibration file, then we should be good to begin scanning. In the next videos, we'll start to look at setting up the scanner in the different modes like handheld and table scan mode. And we will also look at how to actually scan and process the data. That brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we'll look at setting up the CR scan lizard for both turntable and handheld modes. If you find value in this video series, then please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.